Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming back in, despite the beautiful weather outside. Good afternoon. So, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you for coming back. So I would now like to introduce Judy Husi taylor who's the Executive Director and Chief Curator at Band Space Project here in New York City, and she will be facilitating um, the next session on choreographing residencies. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Noemi. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, everyone at Via Albertine. Um, it's so great to be back. And um, thank you all for organizing this important symposium. Um, as Noemi said, I'm Judy Hussey Taylor. I'm director and curator at Dance Space Project, which some of you may know and others may not know that we are located at St. Mark's Church in the Bowery. And um, we're still there almost 50 years. So, um, and I am. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm facilitating these wonderful people here today, and but I did want to say thank you um, to Fuse, to Villa Albertine for insisting on creative exchange between the United States and France, which has nourished, uh, you have nourished us for decades, fueled artists, curators, uh, audiences, um, and it's really good to be back together. So for new friends and old friends, hello. Um, um, this is a choreographing residencies, um, a, a broad topic, and today we'll hear from four distinguished leaders with extensive experience working with artists in various contexts, ranging from large dance centers to universities, to small arts organizations, to independent producer and curator. Um, some work collaboratively, some work independently, um, and we'll hear more about this important work today. Um, I'd like to keep in mind that we're talking about very different scales, all very important, because they feed and talk to one another. So we'll have very large organizations that have their own challenges, small organizations that have beautiful opportunities, and we'll hear about all of that today. Um, Different kinds of residencies I was thinking about when we were pre-meeting. There are those residencies that offer time, space, resources, financial resources, which are always great, um, and focused on creating new work. Then we have community-focused residencies, which shift the emphasis toward education, public engagement, and workshops, so away from perhaps feeding into research and, and into creation of new work, but has a different shift or different emphasis. Then we have a cultural exchange, which focuses more on networks of, connect, of relationships and connections between artists, between cultures, between aesthetics, between different kinds of institutions. Um, so I think as we listen today to remember that each of these uh, cultural workers and organizations have different intentions for the work that they do. Um, so we'll hear from each presenter for about five or so minutes, um, and we'll be, it will be followed by a, a response from uh, Ashley Farrow Murray, who's here with us today, who will join us at the end. And um, you have everyone's bio in your program, I believe. But this is the order of our presentations. Can you hear me okay? I think I'm going in and out, okay. Um, we will start with Catherine Sikenis, Executive Director of the Centre National de la Danse in Paris. Catherine will be followed by Elsa Safarte, the Director of Espace, I'm gonna say 1789, <laughs> in San Juan. San 
followed by Diego Miramontes, Executive and Artistic Director. I'm sorry, did I? Edgar, thank you. Um, Center for the Art of Performance, CAP at UCLA. I apologize. And Mariah Weathers, an independent creative producer and curator who's based in New York City. So, without further ado, um, Catherine, welcome. And take it away. Hello, everybody. So, um, uh, I'm the executive director of uh, Le Centre National de la Danse, the CND. <laughs> We have a lot of uh, missions, and one of them is, uh, is uh, support uh, creation. So, but I, I will start with a short uh, overview uh, of the residency uh, organization in France, and then I will focus uh, on the different uh, backgrounds of uh, residencies. So, uh, in France, contemporary dance and uh, urban dance, and maybe dance in general, have developed uh, uh, greatly over several uh, decades, from the 80s, and um, thanks to a very strong creativity uh, and, uh, in one hand, and by a proactive uh, policy of the state, and uh, of the public uh, authorities in general. Um, and uh, the result, a uh, network of uh, choreographic uh, institutions, les centres chorégraphiques nationaux, so the National Choreographic Center, <laughs> run by uh, choreographers, but uh, sometimes it's a collective, uh, like in Rennes, with uh, FAIR, so Linda is here. And um, les centres de développement uh, chorégraphique nationaux, the National Development Choreographic uh, Center, with uh, no artist uh, director, and uh, a very important uh, result, uh, um, the increase uh, in the number of companies. Um, what about the dance residencies? Normally, uh, residencies allow uh, artists to uh, have a workspace and uh, financial support to create and can take uh, different forms. Um, access to this uh, space uh, are a real, ch uh, real challenge in France because uh, there is an imbalance between the number of companies and uh, the number of uh, the workspaces. Uh, in uh, 2022, uh, there were around uh, 667 companies in France, uh, including 315 uh, supported by the state. I don't have the figure of uh, the additional support from the cities and from the region, but you see it's a, a very um, dynamic and uh, we have a lot of uh, different companies in the different aesthetics. What species to which they have access? Firstly, a lot of residences uh, are organized by the dance uh, structures, uh, but there are only uh, 19 uh, CCN and uh, 13 CDCN. We have two very important theaters in France dedicated to, to dance. Um, uh, Chaillot, the Théâtre National de la Danse, and uh, La Maison de la Danse in Lyon, but they don't have a lot of uh, rehearsal spaces. Um, recently, the state have gradually granted uh, new resources to this institution in order to welcome more and more uh, artists in the residence season. And you, but usually this institution don't have a stage on which uh, to present the shows and uh, they remain modest uh, budgets. Uh, another option of residency is through the multidisciplinary uh, uh, theater. In France, we are uh, many uh, supported by the state and uh, by the local uh, authorities. But they don't have uh, also uh, a lot of rehearsal spaces because 
they were designed mainly at first uh, for the presentation of uh, performances. Some of them also receive uh, subsidies from the state and from the local uh, authorities because they are very committed uh, to uh, dance uh, field and they organize uh, residencies. And it's the case of my colleague, <laughs> Elsa, and she will explain uh, her activities afterwards. So, um, there is no regulation. Uh, the residential potential is lower uh, than the request from companies. As a result, it's mainly the choreographic uh, structure with a limited resource uh, which provide the dance shows and less the multidisciplinary theater that have more uh, important budgets. At the same time, this effervescence means the creativity in dance is very strong and today with a large audience. And it's the case of my colleague in uh, saint Ouen. <laughs> <laughs> Companies can, can be uh, hosted for one, two, uh, three years, and the theater becomes their house, but it's very rare. Um, a lot uh, of uh, residencies are much shorter, and just to rehearse a new piece. The dance companies often uh, welcome for very short times. Uh, for many independent uh, companies, um, uh, they have to find at least uh, five residencies to be able to complete a world production and have enough uh, working time to produce uh, a piece. But the impact of uh, residencies is much broader. <laughs> Apart from workplace and uh, funds, there are many other parameters. And the context is never uh, neutral and uh, can have a very big impact on, um, on the artistic project. These residencies are also important for the teams of the institution uh, because the presence of other creators or creators uh, nourish their overall project and above all uh, contribute to work with the audience, with a different public. And uh, it's, uh, it's because we have a large audience. This creates a dynamic and the companies are not uh, disconnected uh, of the local uh, context. Uh, and uh, um, it's uh, also very Im important. Then this dimension is uh, even more important uh, when there is a geographic uh, displ displacement. Uh, and I'm thinking of the residencies at the international uh, level, and especially when, when it's uh, associated with a specific uh, project of uh, research, research of uh, experimentation, uh, as La, La Villa uh, Albertine. This kind of uh, residences it, uh, is also the opportunity to open your networks and uh, foreign networks. So it's uh, also very important. So it's uh, very, c'est très rapide. Hein? <laughs> very fast. <laughs> Finally, a uh, few words about the CND. So we have two locations uh, in Pantin in uh, nearby of uh, Paris and uh, in uh, Lyon. It's uh, the, second, uh, it, the second French uh, cities. Uh, Tanguy, tu me diras si c'est la deuxième. Hein? Deuxième. OK. <laughs> so we have uh, um, 17 uh, workspace. Uh, this allows us to imagine a very different kind of uh, residences. We invite um, artists for, uh, for two, two years, the associate uh, artist. And uh, last year it was um, uh, Giselle Vienne and currently is uh, Jérôme Bell. And they have a kind of uh, carte blanche. Uh, we also invite uh, French and uh, foreign companies uh, to produce, and uh, after we, we, we present their, uh, their performances in uh, our small theater. 
And then you have a, a real impact because uh, we have a loan system of, of uh, studios and it's uh, free. In 2022, we uh, welcome uh, 360 companies um, uh, every day. So a lot of uh, dancers <laughs> work yeah, at the CND with a lot of encounters. So it's a very great uh, experience. Um, um, in conclusion, the, the main uh, challenges we fa face today are how to attract additional funds for creation, but, and it's very important to reclaim time. It's a real question. Well, hello. Uh, my name is Elsa Sarfati. I'm the director of a place called Espace 1789, Espace 1789. And to excuse that unpronounceable name, I, I have to explain that uh, it was built uh, in 1989, which was the bicentenary of French Revolution. Um, it's located in Saint-Ouen, which is nearby Paris, that's a um, multi-ethnic and popular suburb. And we have two spaces, one with 400 seats, um, which is both used for performing arts and cinema, and the other one with uh, 200 uh, seats, uh, where we only screen movies. And um, each year we program about 40 different shows. Um, we have a focus on dance, even if we do present also theater, music, and circus. And we present as well, um, we present um, well-known artists, but also emerging. Um, and we have um, a, an artist program in residence uh, for two choreographers. Uh, at this moment, there, um, we have Smail Kanute and Lailaka, who are also supported by Villa Albertine, and to a uh, theater director. And that's for a three-year cycle. Um, but we don't have uh, proper re rehearsal studios. Um, Catherine explained very well the, the, the French context, so now we know why, but we don't have rehearsal uh, studio. Um, so what we call... So we are trying... Uh, Sometimes people are asking me, so what is a residency? Are the artists sleeping there in the theater? No, they are not. They even cannot rehearse. So we are trying to, to turn our weakness into strength by finding other partners, new partners for the companies. And we are asking to the others, partners who, who can lend studios like CND, but not only. And so, what do we call a residence at Espace 1789 is a kind of program. Uh, we, we give an amount of uh, uh, funding, funding um, to the artists um, for their new work, to, to commission their new work, um, an amount to present um, the creation, the, the, the performances on stage, and to organize with them a large program of uh, community engagement uh, which I'll explain. So uh, I will give you a few examples of what we call uh, um, community engagement. It was hard to, to translate that because we say education culturelle et artistique in French. But, um, but cultural education, cultural and artistic education in French. Yeah, but um, I was wondering is that mm, when you say that, is that for the, mm, the courses like university or is that for the children, students, etc.? Because we, we are, yeah, I will give you a few examples and you will maybe understand. <laughs> um, one, is this year, for this, uh, during the school year, uh, we are organizing um, a weekly uh, workshop for students, young teenagers. They practice uh, with, a, with a choreographer and during the year they come to attend three shows at Espace 1789. And we could also... Um, bring them to visit a museum if there is a, a common topic between the, the exhibition and the, the, the work of the, of the artist. Uh, another example is a daily workshop that we organize for a group of women um, um, who, are, who have never been to, the, to a theater before. 
And during two weeks, then they do practice every morning, three hours. Then we share lunch, and in the afternoon, we are organizing uh, outings like going to the cinema or to the library, etc. Um, we also organize workshops for um, which are open to everybody, uh, or workshop uh, divided for people who are over than 60 years old, or other workshops for uh, adults dancing with their children, etc. And all of these workshops we are organizing um, before and after the show of the artist. Because I think that when you have this experience, um, a workshop with an artist, when you see the, his or her show, you, you discover it in a very different way, in a physical way. And for example, you can recognize in a, in a performance uh, a movement um, that you tried to do the, the week before. And it, it makes you being, I think, uh, much more open-minded and even um, open-bodied, if I can say something like that. And we also often propose to the artist to, um, to, to create a short piece uh, involving amateurs, inhabitants, and um, after they, they, they rehearse uh, on weekends and evening, for example, during um, 20 or 30 hours uh, on a few months, a few months. <laughs> and at the end, uh, it results um, a showing, a, a short showing uh, with public, and. Um, the experience is commonly um, described by the participants as uh, something unforgettable. And all of the, those projects, these projects um, create a real, real relationship, relationship uh, between uh, artists and inhabitants and between inhabitants themselves. Um, friends are made and even lovers sometimes, that's better than Tinder. And... Uh, <laughs> and um, what I like is that when I see the people coming back to my space and having a coffee or coming to see a show together, and recognize, they recognize the artist uh, in, in the streets, and um, a choreographer or a, a theater director, uh, an emerging, can become a local star. And uh, after three years of residence, they're they are really well known and their um, their shows are sold out. <laughs> 400 sets, I said. <laughs> yeah. And um, in our conversation today, you, you, one of the points was the... Um, um, sorry, I will read my notes, but... Um, drawing on artistic needs, how can we design malleable infrastructures? So one of my purpose is uh, to be based on artistic needs. And in all of that kind of project, I'm trying to, um, to propose to the artist um, projects which are in connection with their own creative uh, process. Uh, for example, Joanne Layton, who was in residence, she was working for um, a piece for a six professional dancer on protest gestures. And I, I propose her to, to work on the same um, material uh, with uh, inhabitants and they create a, a short piece uh, with that movement uh, as a, ba a base. I don't know if it's correct. But <laughs> um, yeah, well, I like when it, this kind of project can nourish their own, their own work because it takes time for them. We give money for the, for the, for the creation, for the for their new work, for the performances, but the, the artists give a lot of time for this kind of project. So I think that it has to be nourishing for, for them too. And they stay, yeah, mostly three years, um, which is a long time, a long duration. And I think it may help them to, to project their work for a kind of time. Well, that's it. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Edgar Miramontes. I'm the new executive and artistic director for the Center of the Art of Performance at UCLA. I was formerly at Red Cat, the Roy and Edna Disney CalArts Theater. 
a center for experimentation uh, related to California Institute of the Arts, also known as CalArts. Um, so my ethos is really thinking about experimentation as part of my um, platform and thinking. Um, in my previous job at RedCat, we uh, did not have necessarily a residency space. We had a technical residency for, pro for, for projects that were just about to launch. So it would just be about one week and um, all of it had to be thrown in there. So the time um, in which it took um, to uh, get there um, is often invisible. I, I often didn't know. Um, so now at the Center for the Art of Performance, um, I have uh, the ability to think about residency. Um, this is, uh, UCLA is a public university um, and um, it has, uh, uh, three spaces that I oversee, or that I will oversee. I just started in September, so this is all very, very uh, new and exciting. Uh, there are three venues. Uh, one is a 1,600-seat theater. The other one is an 1,800-seat theater. And the most recently opened theater, the Nimoy, is 299 seats, which is um, in um, off-campus um, and is um, near... Um, uh, the Hammer Museum, for those who have been in Los Angeles. Um, and so this particular space um, uh, is really exciting to me because I'm thinking quite a bit about, um, other than presenting, what else we can do as it faces a community of Iranian Americans that's just um, south of there, um, and a really bustling, um, incredible uh, food um, and restaurants. Um, so, you know, in our meeting when we were preparing for this, um, Noemi asked about, uh, you know, bring something, a proposal. And I took that seriously because I'm actually, this is my moment to think about what I want to do. And this is all for all of us to think about to see if this is even a viable <laughs> proposal. Um, but so I am borrowing um, from the co-op model, which in the US, um, a cooperative is, as some of you may know, where a group of people come together to pool resources, share in decision-making and governance, and spread out financial risk. Co-ops operate from the knowledge that collectivity lets you accomplish more, and that the people create value for an institution uh, should also be able to make decisions about how it operates. Now, working within a public institution, there's already uh, bureaucracies that I'm not sure I'm going to run into, but to think about the Nimoy as a space for um, uh, artists can come together, uh, foundations, um, uh, other folks that are um, invested in creating artistic work um, would come together. Within this framework, um, I imagine working with three to five local, national, and international artists, collectives, um, supported by their resources for a period of two to three years, in which then a new cadre of, of artists, collectives, would uh, rotate out and then another in. Uh, to support the ecology of LA artists, I would lean towards supporting three LA artists, one national and one international, um, and would provide secured and consistent access to the Nimoy, which is the space. Um, that may include rehearsal space, talk conversations, um, invited research space, uh, showings uh, where process is the performance, uh, and of course, as designed by artist needs. Um, financial resources would be provided by all as a basis, but not limited to a sliding scale. That's my proposal to think about <laughs> as I share it with you all now. Um, and, you know, I was just in Johannesburg, so I'm a little bit jet lagged and uh, mm -hmm. privileged to have been there. I was at the Center for the Less Good Idea, which is a fairly uh, new space um, celebrating their 10th season. And it's an incubator space in which performance, um, the process of making work is the performance. And it's a space mm -hmm. where um, uh, really innovates and allows for emergence to happen. And I've been thinking quite a bit about that and how we move into these new times and how, how to be responsive to the moment. And, um, you know, I think quite a bit about um, emergence as we don't know yet what it can be, that we have to allow ourselves to, um, someone also mentioned it in our previous uh, uh, forum, rewire the way in which we think. Um, I've been looking to a design studio space called Ideas, Arrangements, and Effects based out of Boston, 
who really think about rearrangement of things in which we are so used to doing. And so putting a different arrangement in the mix of things, including this co-op potential idea, might be a way to think about how we think about community, how we think about art and artists as creatives, as creative leaders, um, as change makers, which is what they are and why I'm still in this field after such a troubled time. Um, Yes, I'll leave it there for now, actually. That's my proposal. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Mariah Weathers. I use she, her, hers pronouns. Um, I'm a contemporary dancer. That's what brought me into being on the other side and the administrative producing managerial side. Um, a creative producer and independent curator working with BIPOC performing artists, uh, black indigenous people of color and director of the GPS global practice sharing program at Movement Research in New York City. Um, I've managed different residency programs through the years for different organizations, um, mo most extensively at the former Dance Theater Workshop, now New York Live Arts. Um, and I've played many roles in, this, in the ecology of this field. Um, thinking about the prompt for this conversation of focusing on choreographing residencies, I thought it was most relevant to share what I'm working on now, what I'm doing. <clears throat> um, so I'll start by um, for those who might not know, it's just saying very briefly a little bit about Movement Research, the organization that houses the GPS program. The executive director is here, Barbara Bryan. <laughs> Hi, Barbara. <laughs> um, uh, Movement Research is a creative services organization founded by and for artists in 1978. So we're celebrating our 45th anniversary this year, no small feat. Also moved into um, our own space with office space and two studios. So very, very important moment. <clears throat> uh, movement Research offers programs such as the Movement Research at the Judson Church Work in Progress Performance Series, a variety of artist in residence opportunities, professional level movement classes and workshops for adults, two publications, the Movement Research Performance Journal in print and Critical Correspondence Online the Movement Research Festival, studies projects, and other discursive programs. So my contribution to this panel feels a bit different than um, my co-panelists here, uh, in that um, rather than looking at creative residencies that support the development of new choreographic projects that will eventually have a live premiere, the GPS program supports durational artist-to-artist -artist exchanges with an international artist in residence in a community from one and a half to four weeks at a time. The GPS Global Practice Sharing Program is a reincarnation of the former Suitcase Fund Program created in 1985 at Dance Theater Workshop. It essentially functions as a regranting program um, in support of international cultural exchange projects. Currently, GPS works with an informal network of partner organizations based across 10 countries in Eastern and Central Europe, including Bulgaria, Croatia, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, North Macedonia, Poland, Serbia, Slovenia, Ukraine, and previously, Romania and Russia. The partners propose projects um, for their community of artists through an annual RFP process or request for proposals and GPS grants um, funds to the partners for the, their projects um, in the region. GPS also hosts one to two multi-week residencies for an international artist in New York City each year. During a GPS residency, the artist has the opportunity to make an informal presentation about their choreographic work their creative practice and provide important contextual information about the conditions of the arts and culture in their home city and their home context. Uh, GPS residence, residency artists also receive MR classes and workshops, rehearsal space in the MR studios, and perform up to 15 minutes on the movement research at the Judson Church uh, series. Starting in 2019, GPS supported exchanges with artists and cultural producers from the Middle East and North Africa region. 
including, uh, sorry, providing multi-week residencies in New York City for Palestinian artist Sahar Damoni, Yasmin Bentrifa, and Mohamed Lamkasi from Morocco in partnership with Company Ananya in Marrakesh, a virtual residency for an Iranian artist during our virtual MELT summer workshop intensive series, the duo Nasa for Nasa, Salma Abdel Salam and Noura Saif Hassanian from Egypt, and Romi Asuad from Yadaka Cultural Organization in Beirut, Lebanon. After the pandemic pause, reciprocal projects in the region were able to resume <laughs> and included teaching residencies by Ishmael Houston Jones and Jose Abad at Saraya Ramallah in Palestine, and by Makini, form, also known as Jumatatu and Po, um, at, and excuse my pronunciation, Nafas Sanso de Arc Choreographique de Marrakech during the 2023 edition of the En Marche Festival in Morocco. In April of this year, GPS partnered with the 2023 New York Arab Festival to host two GPS chats on topics, Arab American Choreography Today, featuring Nora Alami, Jad Tank, and Leah Mona Tawil, and contemporary performance and creative production in Beirut with Romy Asuad from Lebanon. I'm very excited to announce that after a pandemical induced hiatus, the Movement Research Festival is returning in spring 2024 with a focus on the artists and partnerships developed through the GPS MENA program. GPS will host artists from Egypt, Iran, Lebanon, and Palestine for two weeks in February and March 2024. Please stay tuned for the official announcement in December. In the meantime, we can continue to support efforts towards a ceasefire, stop the genocide, and end the occupation. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Mariah, reminding us of the importance of artists at the center of crisis in our time and what they can do and who they are and how we should support them in times like this. So thank you for that. And thank you all for sharing your work, which is so rich and so difficult in the best of times, let alone the times that we are in, which are challenges uh, politically, economically, Post, uh, personally, um, and something you all touched on, and I think it speaks to Noemi's question that she posed in this panel, um, foregrounding the issues of research and deceleration in a product-oriented economy. You all mentioned time. Three years was mentioned quite a bit, actually. <laughs> that must be some magic number of years, but we can look at that. But the time and, and how, um, I guess my question is, and my concern is, how we make a case for time, for slowness, for artists and communities and us, the culture workers who work with artists, to have time to be together, to do the work that needs to be done in a given space in a different in, in community. And how that is counter to what we are expected to do and we love to do, which is produce work, support work, create work, see work. So I you know it's a it's an interesting time to think about that and what challenges you each face. I guess I want to say making a case to make more time. What are those in your individual work? What are you, and what are the opportunities that you're seeing now? And so that's my question. It's broad and take it wherever you need to in terms of your own work and organization. Catherine, shall we start with you? You mentioned time, you left us at time, <laughs> time. And I guess, you know, what did you mean? And can you pick up there? She's, uh, she's going to go ahead and speak in French, and I'm going to translate. Yeah, otherwise, my, um, my thinking is going to be a little um, did more we, narrow. Did we introduce you? This is Aubrey, who's our, 
questions. Thank you. Um, so in Fran in France, I'm, I'm really going to talk about the French system. Um, en fait, le phénomène qu'on qu observe depuis euh, plusieurs euh, années, c'est effectivement cette, euh, cette multiplication euh, des créations. So one thing that we've been observing over the course of the last few years is a kind of multiplication of kinds of creation qui finalement se réalise dans des conditions de moins en moins favorables. Which finally um, come about in conditions that are less and less favorable. J'ai mentionné la question des, des espaces qui, qui manquent par rapport au nombre de compagnies. So I first I mentioned the, the question of space um, and the number of spaces that are missing relative to the number or that are lacking relative to the number of companies. Mais la question financière est essentielle puisque la danse s'est développée et s'est beaucoup professionnalisée. But the financial question is really important because dance has developed a lot and has become much more professionalized. Et donc les, les danseurs et les équipes doivent être rémunérés dans des conditions vraiment correctes. So dancers and the teams that <coughs> Companies need to be um, remunerated in the right way. Cela veut dire que à la fois les temps de, de répétition euh, euh, se sont écourtés. So that means first that the time for repetition. No, 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 but the repetition, sorry. De... Rehearsal. The time for rehearsal. No, it's plus court. C'est plus c'est plus court. It's shorter than it used to be. Uh, ce qui a un réel impact aussi sur les projets artistiques, puisque la danse n'est pas un art uh, uh, qui, comme la musique, où il y a cette préparation uh, sur table, ou comme uh, le théâtre, le, tra le travail se fait vraiment dans les studios. So, a dance, um, it, it's, a real, it's a real artistic pact, um, because unlike theater or music, the work is really done in the studio. Euh, avec euh, vraiment cette euh, expérimentation entre les danseurs et les chorégraphes. With that kind of experimentation between the dancers and the choreographers. Donc ça a un réel impact sur euh, les, les projets artistiques qui euh, souvent euh, pour, les pour les chorégraphes ne sont pas assez euh, euh, préparés sur une longue période. So it has a real impact on artistic projects for choreographers who don't get to prepare on a, for, on a longer time scale. Donc ça veut dire qu'il faut euh, re, enfin, revenir, oui, parce que quand j'étais jeune danseuse, euh, une, une, un spectacle était au moins répété pendant euh, trois ou quatre mois. So it means that we have to return to a moment when I was thinking about when I was a young dancer and a, um, a, a show was um, rehearsed um, during at least three or four months. Aujourd'hui, ils sont très contents s'ils ont huit semaines. And now we're happy if we have eight weeks. Voilà, donc c'est vraiment la, la question euh, du temps. La, évidemment, la, c'est pour ça que je parlais de régulation. Excusez-moi, c'est un terme économique. And uh, that's really why we're interested in time, and it's why I talked about the question of regulation. Um, and excuse the economic um, turn. Mais euh, c'est peut-être le fait de produire euh, moins souvent, mais de meilleure manière. So, and it's perhaps in effect um, the, the decision to uh, produce shows less often, but in better quality. Et c'est euh, en fait l'effet euh, un peu né négatif, c'est que les compagnies sont amenées euh, aussi à beaucoup créer euh, parce que pour euh, il faut être visible pour euh, continuer à être soutenu et subventionné. And so the negative effect is that um, companies are really forced to create a lot um, because you have to be visible in order to be paid and to be subventioned. Euh, et dans le même temps, euh, les, les, euh, euh, les enveloppes dédiées à la création dans les théâtres se sont réduites. Euh, donc ça, ça a aussi une incidence euh, importante. Se sont, se sont réduits euh, parce que euh, l'État voilà, a 
comme beaucoup d'autres États, a des, a des difficultés. Des enveloppes Des enveloppes, des enveloppes. Sont, sont beaucoup plus réduites Um, so the, the context or the, oh, oh the, the subventions are, have been much um, reduced <clears throat> in other, um, and the, the kinds of creations that are um, state funded. Et uh, nous sommes aussi dans une période, pour uh, terminer, uh, où toutes ces questions sont extrêmement reliées aux, aux questions de, de sustainable development, de, de effectivement de, des questions écologiques et, et donc euh, presque de consumérisme. So we're at a point at which um, all of these questions of, of financing are related to a sustainable development and to questions of consumerism. C'est comme s'il fa fallait passer par euh, une décroissance pour que les choses aillent mieux. And it's almost as if we had to, to um, pass through a period of de-expansion in order for these things to happen. But this question of time and duration, uh, I mentioned the three-year cycle, um, and I mentioned that we, we, we organized the, the artist residence with... Um, Um, a commission for uh, new work, um, presenting uh, performances on stage and the community engagement. But it, it's not necessary to present a new work each year, of course. I always tell that to the, to the artists it's because of what Catherine is saying. Um, because some programs push the artists to, to create new works each year. Each year, sorry, and it's too much, of course. And so I tell them, you, you can have one creation this year, and no, next year you, you still have the the money I, I I give to the company. You you keep it for research or rehearsal or or other projects with the the the, the inhabitants. You, well, and the the three years duration. Um, We are talking about the, what we can do uh, for the th three years, but we don't have to say at the beginning, you will do that that year and do that the next year. And we are w working in progress together with the, with the companies to say, uh, in order to, to be based on their uh, necessities, their, their wishes, their desires, and what happened to them uh, artistically and personally and professionally and yeah it allows them to to project but not to not, even in French I don't have the word the pro, that's a problem so thank you for helping but <laughs> um I mean, I don't want to put them in a box with a, 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 a strong calendar. Um, uh, even in, 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 in English and in French, it doesn't make sense, but maybe you understand what I mean. <laughs> Breaking up the order here. <laughs> Um, yeah, the question of time, you know, for the work that I'm doing with international exchanges, it's all about time. It's about relationships. And, um, you know, when I inherited the program, there was already an established network. But with the, the new branch in North Africa and the Middle East, it was, it's been a slow process of developing relationships. Um, and, uh, you know, I, my approach is to always try to go to a place before I send any artists there. So I have a sense of a little bit, you know, of what it's like on the ground, what the conditions are that the artists are working in and working the structures or lack thereof, you know, how they're making their work. Um, uh, and then, but then also when, when we're building the residency to try to consider um, how they can maximize the exchange, the time with people on the ground. So when we started hosting the artists in New York City, I uh, formed an informal New York City cohort of artists. So, you know, 
simple things like we had a welcome dinner and making sure the artists were there and then the artists attended, the New York City artists attended their, their GPS chats presentation, their movement research at the Judson Church presentation. But the, so there was a sense of a, of a group um, in this big city, you know, that it's like you can get lost, which is wonderful. And then also like very, can be very daunting and intimidating. Um, you know, and this is like over a two or three weeks of residency time, but trying to create opportunities for them to spend um, as much time together as they can, in addition to the support that they have, you know, access to the studios and classes and things like that. Um, and I was going to say something else, but it left time, 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 time. Um, yeah, and then just, you know, and uh, saying in a, a different way what I think everyone is saying, like, you know, there's a cost related to time, but there's also a cost related to applying for visas and trying to get out of the country, depending on where you're traveling from, trying to get into the United States. So really trying to stretch the dollar as far as I can, which is why, in general, the residencies are a minimum of three weeks. So it's once they're here, they can really spend some time here. So. Uh, a different way of thinking about the time, but still, yeah, like how can we stretch it and um, create more opportunities for artists to be um, in conversation with each other, in dialogue, so. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, I've yet to determine what that's gonna look like um, in terms you know, of what I'm thinking, but um, I, I think I have um, the potential to just think about with artists um, that time in which I said two to three years potentially as, as part of a residency is that it doesn't have to end in a product. It really just is time in the space. Uh, currently UCLA does commission and does a two week uh, residency for projects that are um, uh, in development. Um, and uh, they do, uh, a presentation at the end. I think I really just want to think about developing um, artists and their work um, in and around UCLA also um, uh, that are non-arts and other departments and just kind of think about building through whatever their, their interests are. And so that, that residency or that specific time is really um, could be just being with other departments and um, it isn't something to show. Um, I'd love for it to be a conversation, but I don't think it needs to be something in terms of a product. And I think uh, being a presenter with two other spaces, I have other things that I could do while that time, you know, and program those spaces as well. But to kind of think about this as a separate, but potentially into a presentation as well, but it doesn't have to end in that. Thank you all. Um, and just to add that the, Time helps to develop relationships, and relationships are those over time that we can lean on with artists and others in, you know, in, in these moments in difficulty. I would hope that that would be a proposal that we put more energy into those relationships and building those relationships. And I want to invite Ashley, uh, Pharaoh Murray, I think it's Ashley, okay, we were going to bring you up here, I don't know. Ashley is the um, director of the arts program at Doris Duke Foundation, and as a dear colleague and dance curator, dance film curator, who was formerly at MPAC and has worked with many, many, many artists, and we're just so honored to have you here with us today. Ashley, for your formal response. It's just, I don't know how can you all see? Is, should Ashley be somewhere else? Where should, how should we choreograph Ashley? What? Need, oh, I'm need to be, I think we need to bring you, you up. I can stand. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Is that good? Oh, can we see? There is a camera. Everyone good? <laughs> Full performance. Um, hi, my name is Ashley Farrow Murray. She, her pronouns. So thrilled to be here with you all. Thank you so much for your thoughts and sharings and reflections. Um, and as Judy mentioned, I'm currently with the Doris Duke Foundation as the arts program director. I've been there for, for the long period of two and a half months. Um, and for the better part of the last decade, I have been running a residency program at the Experimental Media and Performing Arts Center. So I think I approach uh, this from with both, both hats on, I'll say. Um, 
And so I, what I'm thinking of when I hear you all talk about different approaches, different temporalities, and what they entail, um, I'm, I'm thinking about dynamic ecosystems of residency engagement and the different aspects of those. So I'll share with you just a few of them that I'm thinking of uh, today. Not an exhaustive list by any means. Uh, financial systems space and place, temporality, as we've been discussing, format, staff support, technical support, documentation and archiving, community placidness, engagement, exchange, being with. I'm thinking about iterative work and what it means for each residency encounter to be distinct from the last and from the next within one artist's practice and across artistic work. How can art artists benefit from different contexts where we have an ecosystem of each institution, program, person, producer, serving a different niche role and really focusing on the dynamism and pluralism of that role, uh, but also recognizing that having to be uh, chameleonic, to borrow Jamil Kasako's word, can also place a deep amount of, um, not burden, but weight on a practice. Um, in other words, where are we now that we are outside of a touring model, where we're going to very similar venues, night after night, city after city? It seems to me that artists who are moving across international lines, but also within states, are having to be in kind of different territories with each institution that they enter, different modes of operation, being with staff cultures or outside of them. I love this idea that it doesn't have to be a product in the end or a performance. What does it mean to have the creation be the thing that we're making? And I think that we're seeing that in many artists' work. Um, many artists who I've gotten to work with and have had the pleasure of working with um, and maybe that we'll even see over the course of these couple of days. Um, I'm curious about the specificity of artist, the specificity of site, and the specificity of project within buckets of residency engagement. And maybe that's enough. <laughs> um, and we had talked a little bit at the beginning actually about uh, my giving a moment of reflection and also for there to be an openness of exchange. Um, I think that you know, maybe I could start that exchange by sharing that my personal context is having worked very deeply in um, media infrastructures and technological approaches. Uh, I was struck to hear about virtual residency work and I've been thinking about that very much, especially with relation to um, the difficulties of moving across borders. Um, in 2017, I had the honor of working with Ali Mouni, um, and we you know, went through the visa process right at the very moment that border restrictions were placed by the Trump administration. And we had a really interesting long-term conversation around what a virtual residency um, within our space would look like. And we, we did that. And it, you know, again, it's, it's all a part of being in this ecosystem, right? It wasn't what we had intended. It didn't serve what we set out to serve. And yet we found so much in the process of moving through that space together. Um, and so, yeah, I'd be curious to continue to think through maybe as a group about what the, the specificity of different encounter might bring about for us in what is clearly, uh, thanks to all of your individual accounts, a changing landscape for the residency model. Thanks. So much food for thought, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that response. Um, yeah. On the fly, I know. Um, and I just want to add that, and it's, an, it's something that I think we wanted to get to. I think Mariah brought this up. And, 
um, Edgar and, and at different points that this really should be collaborative with artists all the time. You know, even up here, you, we we can only fit so many people here, but we should be doing this work with artists, not and for, but collaboratively. And I think that's a part of, um, you know, it's come up a bit and, and how does that work in terms of this responsiveness, not doing the same thing. It's, it's difficult to not repeat, um, actually. And that's the work that we hope to do with artists. But do we have time for questions from people in here? I'm sure there are. And um, we'll open it up to you. And if there are artists in the room, oh, I'd please. love for them no, to speak. No, there are just only a few. <laughs> I know uh, several. Shall we start with an artist? Oh, how about David and Duke next? Thank you. Hi, this is David. Um, and I, you know, I just want to applaud the idea that we're looking at residencies in this question of survival of the creative force. Um, and I think given the fact that we're in the 21st century and the economic and social and political models are constantly shifting, we have to create more fluid and organic systems. I really appreciate Edgar, you looking at effects, ideas and arrangements. I it read the, it's an amazing book. I think it really, I think it's essential for us to re-examine what we take for granted as relationships mm -hmm. and why. And uh, also the concept of process versus product and the pressure emotionally, financially on actually creating those. So what are we actually supporting within these models and how do we reimagine uh, the ideas of incubators rather than as end goalposts? I think it also relieves the, uh, the weight of artists having to come up and develop something that's either liked or not liked. And then that either helps them or destroys them. How do we create a river of artistic growth and support that actually allows people to be creative inspirationally rather than productively? Um, and I think time is really the key. And beyond that is looking at what are the financial models that support those. Um, I, it's wonderful that you have these two streams of support that you can, that allows you to do that. For other organizations, they don't have that. And I'm really intrigued by your thoughts, Ashley, because a lot of the work that I do is surrounding looking at sort of biomimicry. What are these ecological systems that have been around forever that work, that are about exchange, are about transmission, how can we use those to rebuild these models, these 20th century models of performance and an economy? And that's it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Duke Dang. I'm the executive director of WorkSAM Process. Um, most people probably think of us as being associated with the Guggenheim. Um, works in process is really a fancy name for show and tell. And um, I'd offer up this paradigm because for the past 39 years, um, all we have done is share the process and value the process and do show and tell. And it is a viable model for us. And, and I think the paradigm to think about this is the people in our ecosystem that actually have access to the process tend to be the donors. The donors are invited into the studio. They're invited to meet the artia, the artists, right? And they get to learn about the process and they value it. And so they're more generous. But why are we keeping this valuable part of the ecosystem hidden? Why do we keep on prioritizing product when we need to actually monetize every part of the process from studio to stage? And so 70 performances a year, it's show and tell. And I think most artists that come to Works and Process understand that it's a safe platform to share this process. Um, and then along the lines of choreographing residencies, because we are an organization without walls, um, we actually have built an ecosystem of 14 residency partners in three states 
just to acknowledge that we have inherited generations of prioritization of brick and mortar, but not prioritizing the people that use them. And so as an organization that isn't burdened with brick and mortar and the cost of running brick and mortar, we take our $1.5 million budget and we devote it to supporting artists throughout multiple residency cycles and not forcing them to work in the residency space that we own or we rent, but being able to say, well, you're at this point in your creative process, let's match you with the right residency partner or the right community. So I just offer that up. All of our residency partners are at step A. So I'm a sharer to reach out. Um, my only thing is, I'm only going to make an introduction if you commit to pay me as much. If we pay me as much. Hi, I'm Barbara Bryan. I'm with Movement Research. And um, I guess a question for all of us, and to me this ties back into our last uh, discussion as well. Um, Movement Research, as Mariah mentions, is a 45-year-old organization, and our residency program dates back to the early 90s, late 80s. Um, we have m multiple residency programs now. One is our two-year residency program. Um, we have a parent artist residency program. We have a most recent program called Access Movement Play, which is a national program for disabled artists. Um, and we have a Van Leer Fellowship, which is also a two-year residency for um, early career artists of color. I, working at an organization now for over 15 years where the residencies have always been about practice and not about production, have continually come up with the question from artists of how can we show the work we've developed in residency? And so I think this question that we're getting about time is critical. Um, and it goes back to um, what Katrine was saying about artists needing five residencies to put together to create uh, projects. And I think in New York, it's a very similar paradigm. And as we're creating these residency spaces for time, I'm hearing increasingly more post-pandemic of artists wanting opportunities to share process, to share practice publicly, uh, to share final production publicly. And a lot of the artists we were working with, I will say, are earlier career artists. So then that's what takes me back to the conversation we had before and what's happening in, in these institutions and in these colleges and how we're bringing artists into the career path of dance and how we're thinking about practice and process as a very important part of career trajectory, a very important part of time and space and career um, development. And just thinking that, I don't know, I'm just feeling, you know, Edgar, I'm really interested in what you're doing, also being, you know, partnered with a university. Like, how is that um, connection potentially going to be made over time with the students that are coming up through these conservatory systems that do really um, educate dancers to be performers and to go into production. And I know we're trying to shift that for students as well. So it's really, it's a broader question I'm putting out for everyone and would love to engage personally with anyone that's interested in having the conversation further because a lot of, just a lot of thinking I have to do about all this. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Stephanie Batten Bland, and I work in between the, the states and France, and um, have for years had to exist at, outside of systems. Um, and I'm hearing a lot today about legitimacy and the the right to exist, um, and the right to exist, especially inside of curated spaces or presented spaces that are hosted inside of higher education right now and on our side in particular, what I find fascinating is that, yes, we do have the right to exist and to become normalized inside of society. And that does come with, indeed, access to process because that does render us a normal part of the social economical community. Um, in particular, however, what I think is most unique post-Trump inside of the prices of visa 
coming into the States at least, is that I notice in our corporation society and the spaces that often become donors, we allow visa entrances and exits in collaborations with institutions that are abroad. Yet quite often in our concert community, we oblige the individual to purchase the individual visa. I'm very curious right now about how do we support institutions, whether they be small associations or small foundations or five non, five, small non-for-profits abroad so that we can actually move smoothly back and forth because tons of money are exchanged in larger corporative spaces when people are entering under tourist visas. Well, now imagine that the economic value that the trickle down has of a show into a town, into a city, does exist when we bring people in and when we continue our collaborations. I wonder if we can support those people by working with their association so that they do have the freedom and the ability to travel and, and that that weight isn't placed on the individual because we do now know that that visa has now gone up yet another 1600 So now we're looking at $5,000 pretty much for a visit that might last only two weeks, but yet the banker at Citibank was able to come in and make, what, $4 billion in two days. So I'm really curious if we're thinking about how can we widen our models to ensure that the flow of travel represents our flow of thought and our flow of creativity. I'm not totally sure how this relates, but or um, I so I'm thinking about projects that take a long time to make and then a long time to tour. I'm sort of in that process now where I accepted a commission to make a work in 2017 and it just premiered in April because of the pandemic. And so I had to kind of raise money and raise money to not only keep the work alive, but to keep the dancers alive. Um, and to some degree, as much as I could. And now we're at a place where we've presented the work with at four out of five venues that commissioned it. And the fifth venue may not happen until 2025. So, because they're in a whole, because so many institutions, I mean, so many institutions have, are transforming and, you know, staff are changing. So, I'm looking at now a work that has finally premiered that I didn't know if it would, and now thinking about how the dancers are aging and their bodies are changing and the idea is decaying. And how to then, what if this project just then doesn't only go to the fifth presenter but keeps going as like a chronicle of the lives of the dancers like how can i mean this is like an artistic idea but also just curious about when we're talking about time and the kind of expansion of time and making work that isn't based in necessarily vocabularies but practices and how those practices change with the abilities of the dancers and um you know thinking like really really long term about the life of projects and how touring models um, could also incorporate the sense of the way in which the performers can no longer do the work they set out to do, but can do different kinds of work and still call it the same project. Um, yeah, I just want to say that. Um, going back to a lot we've been talking about today is including everybody. I just want to uh, just talk about, I just retired. I worked at the, I was the director at the University of Alabama. I was there for 28 years in the deep, deep, deep South. And during that time, um, I was very fortunate because I was able to create this incredible dance program that allowed a lot of African-American students to get their education. And our first project was to go to Lyon, France. These were 15 African-American kids who we took to France to perform. Um, and that was their first residency. But I say all this to say this. 
is during my time there, I was able to create a lot of programs that raised a lot of money to be able to allow the students, A, to get an education, but B, what we were able to do was, I was able to create a working relationship with American Dance Festival. Uh, I was dean of the summer dance program at Harvard, and I also created this um, program with, what we would do summer intensives with like Radio City Rockettes and ABT did their first summer program there. But I partnered with them, not because that was the mission of our program, but I knew that we would be able to create financial situation that would allow me to be able to have residencies that would allow me to also have financial money to be able to play for African Americans um, tuition. So we were, able, we were able to create this whole dynamic where we were partnering with companies, different companies that we were able to split the, the monies for all kinds of things. But what I'm trying to say is that learning to do that on my own with nobody teaching me that, no one has ever invited me to a panel to talk about how did you do for 28 years create a program in the South, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, where now we have about 15 African-American kids who are on Broadway, which is unheard of. So there is models for this, but we, I think we have the tendency to run to the same people we know. It's like if we have our few black people that we know, we call them all the time. Like we don't think about other people who have been doing this kind of work in other places. I think that that's what we need to start to look at, look out in different spaces where people who have been doing this kind of work, because like as we say in the South, we were taught if you want corn, you plant it yourself. So we, we come out of a model of creating these long something out of nothing. And I think that during this time, we need to turn to people like myself who've been doing this without the corporations. But and, and, and think about being in the South where I learned that I did have to go. I knew I was in a place where there was a lot of fraternities and sororities. I knew to go there to have them to help sponsor this. So it wasn't like running away from my community. I knew how to bring them in as well. I would go to the country clubs and meet and have conversations about sponsoring our concerts and sponsoring scholarships. So I think that you can have all of these conversations that a lot of people who don't have to work in those kind of environments can say, well, I don't want to deal with these kinds of people or those kinds of people. We, in my case, there was no choice because it was bigger than me. So I, it's, you know, what a lot of people who can say, well, I'm not dealing with those people because I don't have to. I never had that choice. So I learned how to bring everybody to the table in a way that I think a lot of people never had to. So I, th I think looking out and seeing who are the people who have been on, in the ground in these places, who have been doing this work for a long time. Yeah. Thank you for that perspective. And it's a great place to end and begin actually creating and establishing new relationships, new networks, and going places we don't, or some of us have traveled for a long time and others haven't, right? So thank you for that. Um, do we want to have any, is, are, are we, we're almost right on time. We could, we could, we could thank Mariah, Edgar, Elsa, Catherine, Aubrey, Ashley. Thank you.